Hey there, I'm a DIY track guy. This is my humble garage and today is break upgrade day. Let's get right into it. So what are we working with here? We got ourselves a front big brake kit from Chikara Motorsports and some stock replacement rear brakes. So at the heart of the Chikara Motorsports front big brake kit is this Willwood Dynalite caliper. It has four pistons and it's mounted using these mounting points here. Also included in the kit are these two steel braided lines. As well over here, we have the Chikara Motorsports adapter brackets. These adapt the mounting locations for the stock caliper to the Willwoods. Finally, as part of the big brake kit, you can option a variety of different brake pads. The ones that I opted for are these Marua SS27 Step 2 street pad that are also good for some light track duty. The pad size is actually a 7112 Willwood standard. So there's many options for it and I can purchase more track specific pads in the future. The cool thing about this Chikara Motorsports Big Brake Kit is that it uses ND Miata 11 inch rotors. They're pretty heavy, so I'm gonna put this thing down. The main benefit of this 11 inch ND rotor is that the bolt pattern and center bore is the exact same size as an NA or NB Miata, which is awesome because this will sit perfectly centered on an NA Miata hub. Of course, this 11 inch rotor is significantly better than our 1.6 tiny rotors. The surface area, the thermal capacity, the venting, everything is far superior on this rotor versus what we got on the car now. I also purchased this Chikara Motorsports brake bias adjuster. It's very much like the Willwood unit that does the same thing. And of course it includes the appropriate fittings and hardware to get it to work in our Miata. Also over here, we got the Motul RBF660 brake fluid. Since we're doing all this work, we do need to bleed the system. So I figured we may as well use some really good track ready brake fluid. Over here, we have some far less sexy rear brake stuff. I got myself some centric rubber brake hoses and we got ourselves some power stop rear brake pads. Look at these cute things. Since this will be a occasional track car, I had to make sure I got the right compound. Track day spec. All right, so now that we've gone over all the parts, let's do a thing. This is our driver's side rear brakes. So we wanna change the rotor, pads, and the brake line. I think the best thing to do here first is to wind back the parking brake. Here's the bolt. So of course I've uh, released the parking brake on the interior. like so. Take this rubber cap off. Here you go. We've removed this bolt. We should be able to just rotate this guy up like so and then pull it back and it will slide off of this pin here. You can actually slide this guy out. Remove the rotor. This is one of the few times I'm actually gonna use brake clean to clean brakes. Now that we cleaned off this sliding pin here, let's coat it with some ultra disc brake caliper lube. So we can inspect the boot here. This one's actually looking really good. It also came with new retaining clips. However, it did not come with backing plates. So we'll go ahead and reuse the old ones. Like so. Insert this in the back. You'd think we're done, but we actually need to wind out the piston a bit, and that's for the parking brake. Otherwise, your parking brake will do nothing. This will barely turn. So let's back it off, quarter turn, see what happens. I pulled the handbrake, and this thing now will not turn at all. Release the handbrake, and it can turn. 
This is our stock brake line, which we will be replacing with this Courtesy of my friend, Matt, he has loaned me this 10 millimeter flare nut crow's foot, and that'll allow me to put it onto the flare nut and get this loose. So I've been working on getting this brake line off for a little while now, and I think it's defeated me. The flare nut on the back of that is kind of rounded now, so I'm gonna stop trying to work at it and just leave this as is. In future, if I upgrade to steel braided lines, I'll deal with it then. So this is the passenger side rear. We're gonna do the same thing that we did on the driver's side. Okay, this rotor doesn't want to come off, so what we can use is a feature on the rotor itself is this threaded hole that accepts a bolt like this. Okay, so we got the rotor in, new pads, and adjusted the parking brake on the passenger side rear. On to the fronts. Before I go ahead and take off the caliper or anything, I want to try to get this nut loose. I coated this thing and soaked it, and I also heated it and put penetrating oil on it as well. Uh, number two thing I need to do is, instead of using that crow's foot flare wrench, I went and got one of these. Thing three is I read somewhere that trying to just leverage this thing slowly with a lot of force has a tendency of rounding off the flare nut. What I'm gonna try to do is to take something like this ratchet here and give it a little bit of an impact to see if I can shock the nut off. So it did round it a little bit. Before I go ahead and uh, undo this, I also wanna try the other side because I don't wanna get this one out, replace this, and then realize that the other one can't come out. Brake line is already starting to leak, so I want to take off the caliper, take out the pads. It's time to install the Chikar Motorsports bracket, new fasteners and washers. Comparison, old rotor versus new rotor. So the dust shield here is touching the rotor. So I'm just gonna use this lever and now we come to the exciting part, the Willwood caliper. Now I'm gonna take my Maruha. I feel like I'm saying it wrong, Maruha. Does that sound Japanese? Thank you very much for your pads, even though I purchased this with my own money at full price. And finally, we take this pin here, this pin, is bent back so that the pads cannot exit out of this. Now we can take out this clip. Now we have this line free. Notice the brake line is threaded on the inside and at the bottom of that is like a compression fitting. And this hard line, it is flared at the end. This is our stainless steel braided line. So you can't see this, but I'm on the back and I'm trying to thread this thing on. Snug, but not too tight. Now we just need to put this in here. And there we have it, Willwood Calipers, 11 inch ND rotor, and the steel braided brake line here, all buttoned up. You just gotta do the same thing on the other side. We're here on the passenger side now, and it's exactly the same as what we did over on the driver's side. Caliper off, rotor off, brake line out.
So this bag with the hardware does not have washers in it. Hmm. Okay, I think I may have done something wrong here. This is too long. It's poked through the bracket and it touches the rotor. These are the bolts that the Chikara Motorsports kit come with. This is a short bolt. This is a long bolt. Short bolt comes with washers. Long bolt does not. The long bolt is for the lower part of the adapter and this bolts to the knuckle. The short bolt is for the Willwood caliper to bolt into the bracket. So I had to go to the other side, take out the short bolts that I used on the knuckles side of the adapter and then change it out for these longer bolts. So we're gonna do it right on this side. Okay, and there we have it. Because the thread is NPT, we don't want to wrench on this too hard and risk stripping. We have our Chikara Motorsports brake proportioning valve uh, with the adapters threaded in. Let's take it to the car and get this thing installed. So this is our stock brake proportioning unit. These lines that come out, they're conveniently labeled R for rear and then F for front. So what we'll need to do is for the fronts, use the female to female adapter. For the rear brakes, we're gonna need to mount it in this manner. That one is not coming out. Let's try this one. That's rounding it as well. Let's try this. Okay, so we have these disconnected. It's this guy that's the problem. Okay, this unit is finally out. We can say goodbye to it and put our new stuff on. No sealant required on this thing. The proportioning valve is installed. So we've spun this knob in so that it's touching the unit here. You don't have to go too hard. It's just enough to open the valve completely and we can proceed with bleeding the brakes. Standard practice for bleeding brakes is to choose the caliper that is the furthest from the master cylinder and then work your ways towards the closest. By distance of line, this is the furthest away. As we bleed the brakes, we'll have to continually monitor this and fill it up with more fluid. Since I don't have any friends, I'm gonna be using this vacuum pump thing. This adapter squeezes on real nice there. I will start pumping. I'm gonna close this off. You'll see the fluid that's come out already is kind of dark. I'll fill up some more in the master cylinder and just keep repeating this over and over again. So I think I'm gonna stop here. We got four ounces of fluid through this caliper. I think it's safe to say that we got all the old brake fluid out and that we've bled most of the air out of this. I don't prefer using this uh, vacuum pump. Whenever you see the fluid coming out of here, there's tons of air bubbles. The best way, of course, is to have someone press the brake pedal and hold it for you as you bleed it out. So I'll have to find someone who can at least tolerate my company for a few minutes to help me with that, but that's perhaps a job for another day. So you can see we drew another four ounces or so. It is quite clear, so we know that the new fluid is all the way through here into this caliper. Let's go on and do the fronts. 
So here we are at the front right corner at the Willwood Dynalite caliper. And you'll notice that there's four bleed screws on this thing. According to the instructions, it says, use only the uppermost bleed screws to bleed air from the caliper. Next, we want to bleed the screw furthest away from the line. So that's the outer one first. Uh, we've bled this much, about three ounces through the system. Very bubbly. No idea if there's still air in there. Probably is tons, but uh, let's just finish off the last corner. So what did we learn today? Well, first off, flare nuts suck. They can get seized really easily, especially over a 30 year period having never been serviced. So get yourself a good flare nut wrench use lots of penetrating oil, soak that thing for days in advance, and if absolutely necessary, use some heat. Go slowly, be careful, and try that tapping technique, applying a little bit of impact to the flare nut as you're trying to loosen it. Even applying those techniques, I did have some problems with those rear flare nuts for the rear brakes, so I'll have to think about what to do there, and that's a video for another time. Also, with those Chikara Motorsports brake caliper adapter brackets, I didn't notice that they were short bolts and long bolts. On the front left, I used all four short bolts, and when I got over to the front right, I noticed my mistake. So don't do what I did. Get yourself organized and sort out the short bolts, long bolts, and use two of each on each corner. Although I've only done some street driving with this, I can tell you right away that the front braking performance is significantly better. Eventually, I will make it to the track, and I hope to show you that soon. I have played around with the brake balance using that Chikara Motorsports brake bias adjuster. And with the crappy tires that I have on the car right now, I can lock up all four corners, even the rears with the stock 1.6 tiny brakes. So that's all from the Mostly Useless Garage. Take care of yourselves and the ones that you love. You keep being awesome. I'll keep being useless. Thank you so much for watching. Ooh, what's this? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah.